It's big, it's bold, and it's orange. <laughs> this is the 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, the adventure-ready version of Toyota's full-size pickup. Today we're here at our test hill where we are going to put its off-road features to the test. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. And it is muddy today. If you're looking for a truck that can handle big loads and big adventures, the 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro just might be the rig you've been waiting for. Under the hood is a twin turbocharged 3.5 liter V6 hybrid system that produces up to 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission with a part-time four-wheel drive system and electronically controlled transfer case. EPA rates economy at 18 miles to the gallon in town and 20 on the highway. This setup can tow up to 11,170 pounds and handle payloads up to 1,600 pounds. Our test truck here features bright solar octane paint and an optional bed mat. Price as it sits here, 69,185 US dollars, including destination. The TRD Pro trim includes a number of features specific for off-road adventures, including Fox shocks, an aluminum skid plate, 10.9 inches of ground clearance, a rear locking differential, and an LED light bar. Of course, it also includes updated versions of Toyota's multi-terrain select and crawl control systems, which we will be diving into very shortly. The wheels here are 18-inch BBSs, and they are wrapped in Falcon Wild Peaks. Now, these are not the same Wild Peaks you would get from a tire dealer. Toyota has a deal with Falcon to get a special edition Wild Peak. This one has shallower lugs, less tread life, and uh, it's also not snow rated. So uh, this is definitely a discount version of the Wild Peak. If you're expecting the same level of performance out of a normal Wild Peak, you won't find that here. However, it is at least an all-terrain tire and not just some all season. Let's stop talking, let's start driving. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, this mud is ridiculous. Love this big digital display. Of course, we have this massive panel up here, which is a highlight of the vehicle. And we're gonna be using it a lot, but not for navigation. Today, we're gonna be using it primarily as an off-road camera. So here at the course, we have a number of different roads and they have different levels of difficulty. And that difficulty actually changes pretty significantly depending on the surface conditions. It's been raining for more than a day here now. So we have a, a moist layer of clay, which basically makes it very slippery because the treads load up and we basically have no traction. Of course, this uses an advanced hybrid powertrain. And one of the big advantages of this setup is that it uses an electric motor to help with the MTS off-road systems, which should really give this an edge over the older versions of the vehicle. And the main reason is simply because you have all that torque from the electric motor from zero RPM. Now, right now I'm just going up what we call go for a run. This is a mild climb. Actually, it's relatively steep. Let's see how steep it is. It uh, doesn't actually give me any incline. Right, where can I where can I see incline here? Tire pressures all at 34 right now. Huh. I don't see an inclinometer, which is kind of disappointing. Anyway, I think this is about 17 degrees of a climb and that's that's relatively steep. Right now I'm just in four high. I'm going to go ahead and switch the MTS system, which is the multi-terrain select. Even in high, we can use it. Uh, I am going to switch it into mud because I want additional wheel spin. The reason I want wheel spin is because the clay is really loading up my tread blocks, which means I'm having trouble getting grip. Huh, that's a problem. So for a regular crossover, this is a fairly easy road, but the problem here is, of course, the moisture that we now have. This is in eastern Washington, and it does not get moisture here very often. Basically just in the fall and the spring. Whoa, this is a big boy. Let's turn on that camera so I can see what we're going to possibly run into. Okay, now we got a steep climb here. Thread between, oh, that wire fence. I do not like that. 
So of course we haven't even gotten to the first real challenge yet. We're just trying to get there on the course. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna throw some power here. We're in four high with MTS on mud. So it's gonna use that wheel braking to help kind of keep me in the traction zone. And there we go, no problem. Okay, so the first course we're gonna actually go do is called the Rattler. It's mostly a rock-based course. And then at the end of it, there's a steep mud climb. So we designed these courses to mimic certain types of forest roads. This one uses a collection of four by eight rock, which is basically the largest rocks measured four inches by eight inches. Um, and this is something you would find on some of the more remote forest roads in the Washington state area, uh, specifically around the Cascades. So you can see this um, has a surface of rock. It's basically a four by eight. But we also have mud in the corners. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do right now is let's go ahead and we'll just do it with uh, the crawl control system because this gives us a really good opportunity to test that out. It's a derivative of the original A-Track system, which is their off-road traction control system, but it's been evolved uh, into a system that you can also use as a type of cruise control, either going uphill or downhill. To do that, all I have to do is, I'm gonna switch into four low so I have access to all of my options. So I'm in four low, had to shift to neutral for that. It is a part-time system. So when you're not in four high or four low, you're in two wheel drive, which of course is rear wheel drive. I'm gonna hit the button down here and I'm just gonna use a low one is gonna be my first speed. And basically what this system will do, it'll start crawling the vehicle at a very low speed. So like I'm just in between zero and one mile per hour right now. What this does is it uses a combination of throttle and brakes, not just all brakes, but also individual wheel brakes to get through tough conditions. I'm gonna turn on the camera here so we can see where our line is. This is such a big boy, I'm a little concerned about scraping on the inside. Also, we have a big rock right there, which I'm just gonna let the system crawl over. Now, I'm not doing anything with brakes or with throttle. I could, however, I can jump in at any time and either stop the vehicle with brakes, like I'll just hit it right there, take my foot off the brake and we're moving again. Same thing with throttle. I can add a little bit of throttle at any time. And we're just crawling along here. And if I think it's not going quite fast enough, I can just dial it up to say mid speed, which puts it about two, three miles per hour. Uh, but I think that's a little too quick. So we're gonna go back to low one, which is right in the middle of the low settings. So this is a system that you would use in very tricky conditions, uh, or if you really just need to focus on driving and not so much on throttle and braking. Um, it also can dig out of a sand pit, which is a very special little trick that uh, Toyota has. Oh my gosh, this thing is beeping at me so much. Stop the beeping. Uh, but you could say it, it is like a cruise control, so it's not something you're going to use every day. It's only for specialized situations. And we have a really steep climb here, so we're going to have to go a little bit quicker because it is so steep. But I'm not going to go much quicker. I'm just going to go up to mid, and I'm just going to let this vehicle crawl up this steep hill. So what is it doing right now? Well, it's using throttle and it's also applying brake to individual wheels, which also helps shift power left to right as necessary. And what that can do is kind of mimic a front locker because this does have a rear locker, but it does not have a front locker. Uh, you can get one on the uh, Jeep Gladiator, uh, the Rubicon, and then you can also get it on a ZR2 um, Chevy. So I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting the vehicle figure out this tricky situation. Now, I know some of you are watching going, well, you could just throttle it up there. Yes, but what would we learn? We would learn that momentum can get up anything. And we already know that. So instead, I am relying on the vehicle to figure its traction out. Now, my tires are all caked up with mud. So we don't have a lot of traction here. And this is very slippery. And I'm going to even cut in very steep here to see basically to challenge the truck even more. So we should see that power shifting around. I'm hearing it shift around. Basically, when a wheel starts spinning, it's gonna apply some braking to it to shift power to the other wheel on the other side. Because even though we have a 50-50 you know, split, oh, I'm slipping. Can this figure it out? Let's go ahead and dial it up just a little bit. And we're gonna see if crawl control can figure out this very slippery hill. 
I'm just gonna keep this going and see what it's doing on the outside. I can tell that the wheels are spinning, but not very much. Let's give it a little bit more wheel spin. We're gonna go up to high one. Heck, let's just go all the way, high two. See if it can climb this. See if it can figure it out. <gasps> it can! Nice! So what happened there was it detected that there were, all the wheels were slipping. It then used its logic to say, well, well, let's apply brake here, let's apply brake here, let's apply brake here and here. And then it did what it needed to to get us moving up that difficult incline. It's really a great system. This is one of the best off-road crawl control style systems uh, that you can buy today. Ford has a similar system called Trail Control, but it is not as comprehensive as this one. This one just has a nice collection of brake boosters, logic, uh, and of course, a really good four-wheel drive um, system. Okay, well, we figured out crawl control. We're gonna now put that away in case we need it later. Now we're gonna focus on MTS. Here's a good use of the camera, making sure that I'm actually on the tracks because I can't see a thing over this hood. Keep my wheels right in line there. So here we are on the logs. Gonna go ahead and hit, let's see, we're gonna put the camera on up here. So we can see, uh, it's kind of hard to see in the grass, uh, but let's just see what this does. So we're in MTS Auto, and we're gonna see how this system shifts power around to get us over these buried logs. And it's starting to rain again, which is just gonna add to the slipperiness of the whole situation. So I'm going to put my left wheel on a rock and a log, and my right wheels are down below. We have so much ground clearance here. The back is actually what I'm really concerned with, that we're going to shimmy into the side. Oh, you know, some vehicles just make it look easy. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So MTS should be shifting that power around. We have a rear locker, but we're not using it yet. Now let's do the climb. This is going to be uh, fun. <laughs> And I think I'm just going to leave MTS on auto and see if it can figure out what I need. Turn the camera on. I'm going to use a little bit of momentum here. To get me up this steep climb, up and over. And hopefully we don't grind. Come on. Definitely plenty of power. Oh, oh, oh. Making it look easy. Nice. And then the final, final climb from that section is the zag to the zig. And there we go. Okay, did it. No problem. That's excellent, excellent result. But we're not done yet. We have another climb to tackle. Okay, now I want to show how uh, you can use MTS with four high. Uh, four high, switch it up. I'm going to put it into neutral. Okay, back into drive. Now, MTS will allow me to use a few different modes here. Uh, dirt, sand, mud, and deep snow. Now, I'm going to consider this to be mud-like, so we're going to get some wheel spin, and I'm just going to gun it up the hill. We'll see how this does. Again, like in four low, MTS will shift that power around left to right as necessary. We have a little bit of a challenging climb off the road here. Let's get that front view on so I can see where my wheels are gonna go. Let's just go right up here. Okay, this is gonna shift power left to right. We floor it. And you can see there's a lot of wheel spin, which actually helps clear my tread blocks. Oh, cut throttle there. That's kind of annoying. And we're basically slipping and sliding our way up this very steep hill. Come on. Oh, now we're slipping ourselves sideways. Okay, that didn't work very well. <laughs> Sometimes a lot of wheel spin is not what you want. This is one of those conditions. Now, this is actually a great opportunity to say, oh, no, I'm scared. I am worried that I'm going to mess up again. So at this point, I'm actually going to put it in crawl control. Let's go into four low, shift it into neutral, put on crawl control, 
and we're gonna go ahead, put it into mid, and I'm just gonna let this climb us to safety with hopefully very little wheel spin. Hopefully we don't shimmy too far left. Come on, let's increase that wheel spin. Oh, oh, I think we are reaching the limits of these tires. Now I am in, I am in crawl control. It should be able to start shift power around, but it's having a heck of a time doing it. I think I'm just spinning here. I got nothing. Okay, so um, I'm putting the brakes on. <sighs> I need maximum traction here. So I'm actually gonna engage my rear locker because why not? Let's do it on an MTS. I want less slip this time. So I'm actually gonna put it on rock. Uh, even though I'm not on rocks, I actually wanna minimize the slip because as soon as I start spinning my tires, I'm slicking up the surface underneath it. Now here's an issue with all of Toyota's basically is uh, when I engage the rear locker, it doesn't come on immediately. It's thinking and thinking and I actually have to shift the vehicle a little bit to get that piece to lock in correctly there. Now I have it locked. Now we should see both wheels in the back spinning together, um, but I'm still not doing great. So I'm gonna actually ease myself down because there's a tree and a rock to my left. And I don't wanna damage these lovely 18 inch BBS wheels. So I'm just gonna slowly ease down. I can see wheel braking actually is kicking in on all corners to keep me kind of aligned here. Just try to get right back onto the track. Okay, so we're back on the track and now I'm gonna th add some throttle. I have that rear locker engaged which should give me a little more traction. Oh man, I'm having a heck of a time here. <sighs> uh, let's turn on MTS and let's just do mud. Sure, let's, let's fling it. Get back onto the track here. Again, I don't know what's over there and I don't wanna find out <laughs> there are rocks buried in this uh, and that becomes problematic. So. Back on the course, I have, what setting am I in? I'm on MTS mud. My rear locker is engaged. And now we're just gonna try to send it up the hill. And I got nothing. I think we're gonna have to get more momentum to get up this. We just can't find the traction. And this is really where having like a proper mud terrain tire would be useful uh, because it has so many more vacancies be between the tread blocks that it can just fling that mud off and get way more grip. Oh man, I don't wanna give up. I wanna do this. Let's just rewind all the way back to a little bit more level surface. Okay, here we are. And I'm gonna ease the throttle in. It's gonna allow for a little wheel spin, but let's get some momentum as we go up the hill. And I need to make sure there's a rock on the inside I don't wanna hit. And there we go, okay. Once I regained some traction, I was able to get up the hill, but whoo! <laughs> it just goes to show it's a razor's edge between traction and slipping backwards. So clearly that was a very steep, slippery climb but we can also do hill descent control going down it. So what I'm gonna do is show you how, hill, how the DAC system works. It's the same button as crawl control, but I'm gonna hit the button down here, which is crawl, and when I'm in four high, it turns into the hill descent control system. So it's not gonna add throttle, it's just managing braking. So I'm in DAC, I get a flashing icon up there, put it into drive, and now I can dial in the speed that I want all the way down to three miles per hour. So I just put it into drive. Let's get that camera so I can see where the heck my wheel tracks are. Is that a rock over there? Is that a rock or is that just dirt? Oh, it's just dirt, go for a hole. The camera could use a little more resolution, I think, because <laughs> it's kind of hard to see. So I'm just gonna line up on this slippery downhill and I'm gonna just release the brake and it's gonna ease me down the hill. Now this is super slippery and I hope I don't start to slide because if I do, this isn't a straight road. It curves and there's a drop right in front of me. We don't wanna hit that. So I'm just gonna let this do its work. It's using individual wheel braking to keep me tracking down smooth and slow. 
smooth and slow. And if I want to go faster, I can move the dial, but I don't. Three is fast enough. In fact, I think three is a little too quick. I would like an option to go slower for like, like to say if this was covered in ice, three would be too quick. Actually, if it was covered in ice, there's, there's nothing you can do. There's zero traction. Okay, well, I think, oh, oh, yeah, that's really using those wheel brakes. It pops up here on the screen when it needs to. Um, so that's my look at the 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. This is an excellent truck if you're looking for a daily driver that also has some off-road capability. Now, I would recommend changing the tires out. These are pretty mild as far as off-road tires go, but they're a fine compromise tire for daily driving too. Uh, get some real Wild Peaks AT3Ws, or if you're going to be in mud like this, this is where KO2s would really shine. Um, so look at the BFG KO2 if you want something, you know, for conditions like this. I kind of don't want to do really, really hard things with this truck because there's no front recovery hooks. If on that incline I wasn't able to actually get up it, and let's say I got hooked into a tree or something, the only option is to pull the truck out and there's no recovery hooks on the front. So that limits what we're going to do with this truck in terms of um, off-road adventures. And I think that's a real miss. Every other maker manages to find a way to put hooks on the front, and I'm kind of disappointed that Toyota hasn't. Um, but overall, I still enjoy this truck and it's just this truck has come into a category where it's just super competitive and I think it works for certain buyers, but it doesn't work for everybody. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you and I do hope you enjoy them. And I really hope you learned something. <laughs> Crawl control does not save you every time. It just doesn't. Sometimes you need momentum.